Hi, my name is Doug Davis. I played professional baseball for 17 years. I pitched left-handed pitcher, starting pitcher, and I'm here to help you with your kids on your baseball team to throw the ball correctly. So my son Gavin is going to get into uh, two key positions that you want to teach your kids <clears throat> how to field the ball in a ready position and a power position. This power position is key. With the ball over the head, with the baseball face behind him, not like this, the baseball behind him like this, and using this front shoulder to aim where you want to throw the ball. So if this shoulder is this way, he's going to be trying to throw it over here and have to adjust that way. If he's open, that means there's a lot of strain will be on that arm. So let's make sure that our body is straight to the target each time with the, with the ball above the head. We don't want the elbow down here. We never want the elbow below the shoulder when we're throwing the ball. It's very painful. It can start getting painful in the shoulder and the elbow at the same time. All right, so every day when you have your kids play catch, you should have them start on one knee like so. And we always get in that power position that I, <clears throat> that I mentioned before when we're throwing. This right here is exact the position we want on every single throw from this position on one knee. You'll do about 10 or 15 throws each kid <clears throat> before we end up standing up. And the toes will be forward in an athletic position, bent, knees bent. And again, getting in that same power position here. All right, and it's very important when we throw the ball that when we throw the ball, we're here and we finish down to the ball, not across our body. We want to finish down, get on top of the ball and pull down. The next position, we'll call it, we call it the saddle position. The saddle position is legs apart in an athletic position, power position, like so. <clears throat> and we're going to rock back and then forward and release the ball. And this gets our weight back to be able to throw with our body weight as opposed to just our arm and, and leading with our elbow. So this, these are the three basic ones we want to start off with. Then we can move them back and have play regular catch. But just make sure your kids are in that same position every single time in that power position. This will definitely help their accuracy and our misses will be down instead of up. When we get our, our elbow down and we throw uphill, that's when we throw it over the head of, of wherever we are throwing it to, our target. If we're going here and we just throw it down, it's always going to be low and hopefully <clears throat> your first baseman or whoever you're throwing to the target will be able to block it. Another thing to look for is discipline with the glove. Your glove must be <clears throat> coming to the target, back to your heart. A lot of kids our age, or his age, will end up dropping his glove and opening up too soon. This causes the ball to miss left and right, way up and way, big misses up here and down here. We either pull the ball down or we leave it up. <clears throat> so some good exercises on that would be <clears throat> Gavin, get up here, please. He'd be again. He'd be with the wall, like this, right? Pick up your leg to pitch, and then when he breaks his hands, his his glove cannot hit this wall, so he keeps it here and then goes through his whole delivery. So that's one thing that you can do. You can also put the back towards the wall, like this, and <clears throat> get it, get up next to it, and then he can come up with the leg up. And go through his whole and go go watch out watch your step right here. He can go through his whole delivery, and he's not falling off because he'll be hitting the fence. So, as a pitcher, if you're trying to teach your 10-year-old, 9-year-old how to throw the ball, it's always important to talk about direction. So, direction is obviously where we're throwing the target. We want our legs to, we want our feet to work towards the target at all times, along with our glove and in that power position. Okay, we don't want 
<clears throat> our head to be back this way and end up throwing like this. A lot of strain on the arm and the ball is usually going to go this way or be way up here. All right, so direction is huge. We want to think about going downhill on a skateboard. If we end up going across the body, we're going to go this way on a skateboard. Same thing with the ball. If we're going to step across our body, we're going to have to open up or we're going to really have to open up to get the ball where we want to throw it. So think about skateboard going straight down a hill and using our hips as a merry-go-round. This is the only part that uses as a merry-go-round right here. Notice my upper body is not going side to side. This works as a Ferris wheel. So we have skateboard, merry-go-round, Ferris wheel. I'm going to show you how <clears throat> to go through the five steps of your delivery uh, step at a time. And I'm going to coach my son on how to do it, okay? So step one is getting your sign. So you're going to get your sign, okay? Now when we get the sign, we're going to come up looking at the runner at first base, okay? That's good, right there. Make sure we're not opening up too much because when you come set, you can't move. You can only do this, but you can't move that back leg, okay? The next move would be his balance position, which his front leg would come up. This is the balance position right here, okay? We still want to be relaxed up here. We don't want to get on our toes or anything like that. We want to be balanced here. We don't want to feel like you're falling forward, okay? That's the worst feeling because then you got to hurry up, get your arm in that power position, and all of a sudden now my arm's lagging and the ball is going everywhere. Okay, number four position is foot down and glove up, just like that. And that is perfect right there. As long as our weight is still on the back foot, just like that, and then, uh, and then step five will be the follow through. Let's make sure that when he follows through, go ahead, follow through, that we end up low onto the ground, not across our body, okay? Across our body, we're working this direction. We wanna work up and down, okay? So make sure that we're up and down and that back leg comes up. Don't let that back leg drag. If it drags, it's actually a slower pitch. We want to make sure that fastball <clears throat> is going to be the fastest he can throw it every single time to stay consistent. Okay, I want to go over, which is a huge problem in 9, 10, 11, 12 year olds, of the spin of the ball. We want the spin of the ball to move 12, 6. A lot of kids at this age will throw it like they throw a football, which good in the power position. And then when they throw it, their hands will be on, the fingers will be on the side of the ball. We want to make sure the fingers are on top of the ball. So when we throw it, we have this rotation. Okay? <clears throat> now, it's kind of hard to, it's kind of hard to teach this. Once a kid has always been able to, you know, throw pretty much, they're throwing sliders is what they're throwing. So if the ball's moving glove side, so go ahead and power position. And then when he throws it and he's on the side of it like this, the ball is going to move glove side, okay? It's going to move this way, okay? We want it to be either straight or arm side run is what they call it. We want the ball to move this way, away from his throwing arm. Okay, so a lot, of, a lot of coaches have problems with a kid out on the mound that's just out there on his own, his, his own program, uh, you know, throwing, you know, throwing his glove down and all this, you know, all, all this extra movement. We want to make sure we are balanced all the way through the delivery. It doesn't matter what age you are, you need to be balanced through, your, through the whole delivery. So that balance includes from this position, this position, this position, and your finished position. Everything is balanced. Notice I'm not falling off the mound, or I'm not, you know, throwing my, my, my glove hand way out here, or my head's not going this way. All this is off balance. If somebody were to come and push me when my head's this way, I'm gonna fall, right? So let's make sure that we're balanced all the way through. We have a good foundation. If we don't have a good foundation with our core, we're not gonna be able to throw the ball where we wanna throw it every single time. One of the things we want to look for when a kid is throwing the ball, we get in that power position I've been talking about, okay? We want to make sure our, our nose are, is over our toes throughout the whole delivery of me throwing the ball. So when I get the ball here, my nose are over my toes. I'm here, nose are over my toes. And when I throw, my nose are over my toes. We never want our head to throw the ball. We never want our head to go behind us. Once we do that, we give up a lot of power. Now we're just throwing with the arm. And another way to look at it is getting the ball here, getting our nose over our toes, and then what's behind the ball? My whole body. If we think about our head getting out of the way, what's behind the ball? Absolutely nothing. That means we're throwing with all arm and not our body.
Okay, now I'm going to show you that power position in a fielding stance, okay? It's not only used just for pitching, it's actually used for every single position you play on the field, okay? So my son, I'm going to tell him ready position. This is something you can do. You can line up all your, all your uh, players on the line and tell them, hey, when I say ready position, they all get in the ready position. And when I say power position, power position. You get in the power position just like that. You can line them all up and do the same thing. You say ready position, power position, ready position, power position. And that's exactly how you want to get these, these kids used to, used to feeling the ball and throwing the ball accurately. And now I'm going to roll a ball to him and he's going to show you how he how you uh, receive the ball to the stomach and then get in that power position to throw the ball to the first baseman, all right? Here we go. Boom, stomach and then power position. Did you notice how, go, go, back to power, or go back to ready position? So when I grounded him the ball, he brought it back to his stomach. That's where we want it right there. And then he, as he has it in his stomach, he wants to get in the power position. He wants to move his feet. And that means he's in the power position, ready to throw the ball to his target. Okay, now I'm gonna go through some grips that you can teach your kids. So at this age, some of the kids have small hands. They're not really ready to go the two finger. And then usually most of them are throwing either three finger or hold a whole hand, okay? But we'll go through the three fingers for nine year olds that have smaller hands. <clears throat> we wanna grip at four seams. Four seams means we have four seams working for us. One, two, three, four. There's a two seam, that means we only have two seams working across, one, two. Those are the difference between the two fastballs. I suggest you start with the four seam fastball because this one stays truer and straighter. So we always want <clears throat> our fingers on top of the ball and our fingers on the, on the laces to be able to feel that pull down out in front. Uh, on the ball and also when we pull down on it we also are going to miss down so we never want to miss up if we end up with our arm our fingers like our fingers like this and we're pushing up the ball is going to go up and we're going to end up throwing it over the first baseman's head or the catcher's head or wherever your target is okay now i'm going to show you a drill that will help you get the fingers on top of the ball as opposed to the side of the ball okay uh, the way i like to explain this is i ask the kid if they play play uh, football all right and they say yes or uh, no i don't but they play with their friends and then i ask them okay will you ever spike the ball when you're when you score a touchdown and you're like yeah that's you know and you want that big high bounce that's what i'm looking for here but what I want to see is this spike ball, goes, it's going to spike right in front of you and I want it to go straight up. I don't want it to go this way and I don't want it to go that way. Gavin's going to show you how the wrong way is <clears throat> at first and he's going to spike it up and make it go that way. Which means he got on outside part of the ball and he's pulling it down. Go ahead Gavin. See how it went to the left? We want to make sure we're working straight over the plate. This drill is very good to feel that pressure and the leverage on your, on your fingertips. Now he's going to do it the other way that's not supposed to happen. Oh, that one, that one he, he didn't get on top of it. And you can see right there, he didn't get that high bounce, okay? We want to make sure when we spike the ball that we're spiking it straight over the plate or over your target. So he's going to do it the right way this time. He just scored a touchdown. He's super happy. He's going to pick up that leg and we call it the Gronk spike. Okay, we're going to, we're going to Gronkowski spike. He's going to spike it right here. He's going to hit the top right there. Oh, he pulled that one too. That's okay. Here we go. Do it again. Make sure it's straight. There we go. That one went straight over the plate. And did you feel pressure on your fingertips, Gavin? Yeah. He did. So that means he's using leverage to pull down on the ball and leverage to throw the ball. Leverage takes your weight to pull down on it, and it takes your fingertips to get on top of the ball.